I know I should know Ryan Perry as well. I should know this guy. Met him at a couple events. Nice guy. There's a lot of Twitter followers actually. Not from Matt. And uh, Ryan Ferry is going to be on the play. Freckin' wooded foothills. Being on the play is a huge advantage in this matchup for sure. If he has a turn one creature and you can apply some early pressure, that would be excellent. All right, so Ryan on the, yeah, winning the dial, we'll start on Goblin Guide. And Crash on in draws Fetchland, Flooded, Strand. Flooded Strand here for Shootman. So Shootman down to 18. And if fairies can have something like a turn two idol on the great level, revel, or if Shootman produces some creature and then fairies hits it with a searing blaze, he'll really start to pull ahead in this damage race. And on Eric Shootman's side, a lot of times that turn one goblin guide showing a land is free because they have to discard a card. Not in this case. Eric Shootman does have a fetch land for Mausoleum Wanderer, so stays under eight cards. And fairies won't be able to searing blaze this one in turn two. You can just uh, force Ryan to pay an additional one. Swing again for Goblin Guide, Cavern of Souls. This is a fun test when it comes to burn. Sometimes they keep a one land and, and they're just casting one land spells. So we'll see what there is for follow up. It looks like a lava spike. That'll shoot Shoopman down to 12. The one land hands aren't inherently bad, though against Mausoleum Wanderer on the board, that one land hand is a bit of a liability. Right, against a deck that's full of creatures with some soft permission. And how about this? Ooh, Thalia is the play for Shootman. If you're stuck on a one land hand, Thalia is pretty nice here. Yeah, this is going to be really punishing. It's also just a two power first strike creature, so it just gets to check yeah. the goblin guide. And Ryan Fairies, his draw for the turn is Lightning Helix, so yeah. No attack, can't cast any spells, passing back to Eric, and a big opportunity for blue-white spirits. Yeah, Ryan came out of the gates with some early damage, but unless he starts drawing some lands, Eric might end this game still at 12 life. Cavern Souls naming spirit, that'll allow Shootman to cast Kira the Great Glass Spinner. This means that Ryan can't reasonably ever kill the Thalia. Between the Thalia making spells cost one more, having the Kira ability on it, and having Mausoleum Water to protect it. I don't see Burn removing this card. Right. And Kira is a spirit, but it's not a tribal card. It right. just grants all your creatures this kind of force field effect. It actually used to see a decent amount of play in Merfolk. Yeah, right. You'd think, yeah, it's, it's not just spirits gain the glass spin. The, yeah, glass spinner? Glass kite ability. Yeah. Betrayers a of Kamigawa. Jetting glass kite. There's a picture of one of the modern master sets as well. Fairy is gonna, goes to 13 after cracking a fetch land here. It now does have two mana, but it'll be interesting to see if he can get out of this. There's so much taxing happening on the side of blue-white. And Eric's damage output is getting a little bit higher every turn as well. And he's going to go for Eidolon of the Great Revel. I was interested to see whether he'd play this or not. The way the race is shaping out, it almost felt like this Eidolon was is going to hurt Ryan more than it hurts Eric. If Ryan can make a third land drop, one that doesn't deal any damage to him, and start casting Lightning Helixes, I think he can still win this race. And Mute Vault from Shoopman. Four copies here in the deck. Currently, he's taking three in the air. To make that higher, that means Eric's casting spells. So that's good for at least two damage off the Eidolon. Okay. But it, I think specifically land and Lightning Helixes, the fact that it gains life, is really what Ryan needs here. Yeah, well, the spells... You're thinking about pointing it upstairs? Yes. Hey, you can't point it anywhere else. Sure. <laughs> that Thalia, though, with First Strike is still just bl bricking Ryan's attacks. Right, and, and he, he has two creatures he could try to shove, but the Muta Vault's just going to make that a null proposition. Yeah, no third land drawn from Ryan. He's now behind in the race. We will see for two mana Lava Spike. So Ryan will take two to deal three. With this Eidolon in play, I don't know, this wa Mausoleum Wander is so good here. This is a tough spot for Ryan. Yeah, yeah, even if Ryan starts, if he were to produce that third land and cast Lightning Helix, the Wanderer would be able to at least check the first one. Right, so what happened, the problem is Ryan still takes the two damage off Eidolon. Right. And Eric just has three power of flyers, so that's just going to be a consistent damage source, whereas any damage that Ryan's dealing is reliant on casting spells. 
Eric's thinking about a rattle chains on end step here. Does he want to go to seven for it? Modern Doesn't make a huge difference casting it here or next turn, as it's just three plus five is the way the combat damage works out. And right. because Kira's blocking for his creatures, it doesn't really make a difference. I don't think he's going to be able to. I don't think that Ryan's going to be able to do seven damage on the following turn, so it probably doesn't really matter either way. Yeah, Shubman will go to seven. He decides to cast it. Right, so this attack, the Wanderer will be back to a 1-1, one, one, so it is only for five. If Eric can play and cast another spirit to pump the Wanderer, he can put Ryan to two, and that Eidolon should lock Ryan out of the game. Yeah. Or does he have more? He has another Rattle Chains. Okay, this means any spirit is lethal this turn. Well, that seems pretty good. Two, four, six, yeah. seven, plus a Wanderer trigger if you can put a Spirit on the battlefield. Yeah. Lethal seems fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm in I will lethal. accept dealing lethal damage. Any Spirit here. I think he has a second Kira. That works. Yeah, you just uh, sacrifice the fresh one to the Legend rule. Mausoleum Wanderer still sees it enter. Two mana. That's This one's fine, too. Going to path one of the blockers, fire up the Muta Vault. Then he'll have two ground attackers. One of them will punch through. Yep, pass the Goblin Guide away. Eric down to three. Right. Activates Muta Vault. So, yep, six attackers, one blocker. Five get through. That's going to be for nine, no matter how Ryan cuts this. And he only has eight life points to work with. Mm, nine is higher than eight. That's why, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Block, and game one goes to Eric Schutman. Blue-white spirits picking up the W. And a lot of that being difficulty with the mana development for Ryan, and Schutman also punishing on that front the Mausoleum Wanderer, the Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, making that tougher. Well, it's a tough thing, right? So Burn is a deck that, if you're on the play, a two-land is actually probably... A hand with only two lands in is probably your best opening. Yep. Um, a one lander with Goblin Guide and a Lava Spike, I'm not going to send that back with Burn. Yeah, that, that's acceptable in a lot of situations, especially if your two mana spells can be so game ending. We saw when he produced that second land, he cast Idol onto the Great Revel, which is your best card in a number of matchups. Right. Well, well, let's look over at the sideboards. First on Ryan Ferry's side, pretty standard sideboard here for Burn. The full set of Revelries. They have three Searing Bloods, two Rest in Peace, two Deflecting Palm, two Exquisite Firecraft, and he actually has two Ensnaring Bridges today. An interesting card, though not one I expect to see in this matchup. Yeah, this is a matchup where there's a bunch of two power creatures and he wants to be attacking. Uh, the three Searing Bloods, those are going to be the best cards here. They're not right. going to be great against everything. You know, Kira Great Glass Spinner is going to be a problem if this is the game plan. But you can get it in early anyway. Yeah, that was what I was thinking is interesting. Normally in creature matchups, Burn goes for Searing Blazes and Searing Bloods. It's pretty clean. Eric's deck has four Rattle Chains, four Drogskull Captains, and two Kiras, and three Thalias. At what point does Ryan have to not, does that game plan become not an option? It really depends on how close the matchup is. If you feel like you're a significant favorite, and there's all these things counting against having this card in your deck, then just leave it on the bench. Yeah. If, if you feel like the spirit stack is providing significant pressure, you have to race, and you just have to execute with a Searing Blood, which might be the case on the draw, I don't think is the case on the play, then you know, maybe um, you can just forward have it on the sideboard when you're on the play, bring it in when you're on the draw to try to make up that ground. Yeah, I was wondering something like that. You know, you've already seen Kira here, and you'd hate to have... The thing you would burn what you don't want is you don't want your burn spells to be unable to connect, right. which Akira would do. And the other card to be looking at, the two Exquisite Firecraft, this is a deck with some permission. However, there's some give and take with this one as well. It's a three-mana spell against a deck that has already shown you Thalia. I mean, yeah. you can get it through Mausoleum Wanderer, that's kind of whatever, but you can't get it through Spell Queller. Right, so it, it gets through half their permission? Maybe that's worth it. Yeah. But I could see that going either way. Right. Ryan might... I could see Ryan going all the way to presenting his main deck 60 again. Yeah, that would be totally reasonable. On Eric Schutman's side, two Geist of St. Traffs, two Vendillion Click, two Negate, two Damping Sphere, two Worship, two Stony Silence, two Rest in Peace, and a Ruined Halo. So part of Fairy's plan, especially if he's bringing in Searing Blood, is going to be to kill all the creatures, but the Worship does combine with another number of elements of the deck. Those Kiras are going to make that job harder. Draw right. Skull Captain is going to make that job harder. So I think there's enough argument to go for Worship in a matchup like this. 
And then the negates are going to be pretty good against a lot of what Ryan is up to. So these cards all seem quite good. Don't love Geist on the draw. Yeah, that's my question. Is this a Geist to St. Traft matchup? Once you're looking at Worship, it gets more inviting kind of play or <laughs> sure. draw. But uh, I, I can see that one going either way. I do like how Shootman can just go on this anti-removal plan and how it gets to burn that's playable. You know, things like Geist, Worship, and then all the other cards I mentioned that either have Hexproof or have s some sort of form of, I don't know, yeah, Kira, something like that. Yeah, some kind of protection built in. Yeah. This is going to play quite a bit better against a deck that is bent on the attrition elements, whereas Burn can just say, all right, I'm going to go upstairs. You have to have the worship. But it, it still plays here and can win a number of the games. It's Blue White Spirits deck, kind of a new one to the modern scene. Um, once again, the printing of Supreme Phantom, just like it did with Bant Spirits, pushed Bant Spirits, I think, up a tier. This deck without Supreme Phantom is likely not even a deck. Just as far as its, its curve gets pretty poor without that two drop. I think you can fill in with this deck a little bit better, actually. I think that Supreme Phantom can be really mopey on its own, and okay. it combines with Collected Company much better than it combines with Ether Vial. Okay. Whereas th this deck, um, you know, certainly that extra power, it's going to come into play in a number of matchups. In particular, what Supreme Phantom has really done for Spirits is allowed you a race effectively in matchups where you want to block. Yes. Because absolutely. a lot of your creatures are just chump blockers, usually. Right, most of the spirits have, are low toughness, and Supreme Phantom actually cuts the other way. Yeah, though though once you're in this Ether Vial build with Thalia, this deck was already a little bit better at blocking, but you're, you're right, Supreme Phantom does upgrade you on that front. More Lords generally isn't going to hurt a tribal <laughs> deck. <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> yeah, what I'm interested on is that, I would said before, this feels like the kind of deck where it's just a better merfolk deck, being just a 30 creatures for Aether Vial blue deck. <laughs> well, been, merfolk, hearing, right. been hearing a lot about decks that are better than merfolk in modern. At some point, we're going to get to the get to the place where merfolk is going to get pushed out of the meta. <laughs> okay, it's going to happen eventually. Turn one, Rift Bolt suspended by Ryan. He was on a mulligan to six here. And Shubin just a Seachrome Coast and passes. He goes to 17 from that Rift Bolt. Now we'll see if Ryan can have a second mana source here. He's going to want to have creatures in this matchup because Shootman mm -hmm. has enough stuff that can disrupt a few burn spells in his deck. Well, Fairy's picked up Goblin Guide this turn. A turn late on it, but it'll still play here. He's shocking here. You, you would generally Let's like go. to see Eidolon of the Great Revel on that window. Could be a Boros Charm. He's shocking. He has something. It ha yeah, it feels like it has to be a Boros Charm. Maybe it's Searing Blood. So there's a lot of stuff that's not going to play against. Eric says go, and we do see Boros Charm on step. That'll send Shootman to 13. Remember, Shootman, of course, could have a play here. Rattle Chains is available for the Blue White Spirits deck. Right. It would be disastrous if it was immediately met by a Searing Blood or a Searing Blaze, though. Right. It will keep a possible Goblin Guide in check. Well, I guess you're right. Could be Searing Blood. Here's Guide from Ryan Fairies. Two cards left in hand, two mana up. And he's shocked for that third mana source. Yeah. It's got to be something. I like that quite a bit. <laughs> Attack with Goblin Guide. Negate the top card of Eric's deck. Won't get to draw it, but a nice one to have later on. The first two turns made the Negate look okay. Now that there's a Goblin Guide to worry about, it is a bit worse. Here is Rattle Chains. Trig trigger on the stack. We'll go ahead and see. Blaze it. Does he have a removal spell? If Eric trades this, that's going to be a big win. Mm. And it looks like he gets to. Yikes. And now he's drawing the gate. He dealt with that creature. Another Boros Charm sends Eric to nine, but Fairies is down to one card. And with Shootman's Hand being, I believe, third land, two Spell Quellers, and that negate he just drew, I'd... You know, nine's a low number, but it's going to be hard for Ryan to close. Kind of everything about Spell Queller is great against Burn. You know, it has three two, toughness, three. whatever. But yeah, it blocks everything and catches all of their spells. Here's Monastery Swift Sphere from Ryan. Just one card in hand. With just one card. And on Eric's side, I'm down to Spell Quell just about anything. Yeah. That includes this Monastery Swift Sphere. He has to fetch to eight to make the play. 
We already know about Negate. As you mentioned, there's a second Spell Queller. He wants to just start getting in damage in. Because yeah, in the absolutely. short turn, he'll be able to catch a few things that are lethal. And from eight, there's pressure on fairies to even make Shootman care about countering anything. Yeah, now, it'll be interesting to see how much more Shootman is, is confident to commit. Because he is at eight, I imagine he wants to keep this Negate up as much as he can. He's already seen two Boros Charms. In all likelihood, he's looking at getting hit by three spells for it to be lethal. See Muta Vault from Shootman. And Supreme Phantom. That's something I like this where you can keep committing to the board while leaving up Negate. Well, he has a four toughness spell queller now as well. Yeah, attacks for three, Ryan down to 12. So that uh, Swift Spear, that's probably going to be locked under that for the duration of the game. Fourth land from Fairies, and he passes. Shootman has both Queller and Negate up. With that much counter spell, if he has a fifth land, he almost doesn't need to play any more creatures. No, he should be able to close this one. This is just a three-turn clock. He has two counter spells. He also has eight life to play with, which is kind of like a free counter spell as it is. Adds Mutavolt in. That's a 3-3 Mutavolt thanks to the Supreme Phantom. So this attack will be for seven. Yeah, now that's just a two-turn clock with the Mutavolt, and he gets to leave up Negate the whole time. T tough to lose from there to a one-card hand. Sends Ryan down <laughs> to five. That's just math. And one more card drawn for fairies. And he extends the hand. Eric Schutman, Blue White Spirits, 10 and 1, a convincing 2 0 over Burn here. Yeah. I, I do think that it is a rougher matchup for Spirits, though. You saw there, Ryan only had the one land in game one. His mana was a little bit taxed by the spells that Schutman was casting as well, and then really never was able to get set up. In game two, Mulligan to six, a little heavy on lands. But um, for Shootman, we have him at uh, going on to 10 and 1 with Blue White Spirits, another deck that I don't know how much was on anybody's radar going into this weekend. Yeah.